Well, thank you very much. After that introduction, I can't, hear, can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> now, you're absolutely wonderful, and what, what I'd like to do is, is make some comments, and if you want to get into Q&A, that's absolutely fine. As you all know, I came here to endorse Audrey Britton. I think that will make all of you happy. And let me, in the process, make some informal uh, comments. First, let me address, if I may, the issue of loyalty. I'm not much on electronics, but after endorsing Tom Warner yesterday, uh, my wife was amazed uh, how many people thought I was one of the worst traders since Benedict Arnold. <laughs> and I think the, the issue of loyalty, frankly, is important. And I don't say that flippantly. But the issue becomes, to whom is it that we're loyal? And when you go back and read Madison's Federalist Papers on organizing what ultimately became political parties, political parties existed as a mechanism to take power. That's really what they were, an organized effort to take power. And the more ideological parties get, the more narrow they become. And so political parties, particularly in the United States, where they would like to win national elections, tend to focus on what they used to call the broad tent. And if you had an uncomfortable alliance under the tent, divisions rather private. Uh, you take a look at the Democratic Party, roughly uh, 1920 on, and you had that very uneasy relationship between the North and liberal and the South. And in spite of those very, very deep divisions on very fundamental issues, the party held together. And the compromise usually was uh, that the head of the national ticket uh, would be a northerner, and the number two on the ticket would be a southerner. And then, of course, all the major committees were run by the south. And so it's not an accident that you see all the goodies down south, just as in the state of Minnesota, where seniority was, was so worshipped, uh, drive the roads of the 8th District. <laughs> As they say, they're paved with gold. <laughs> but I would argue that in the last decade or two, the caucus system uh, has become very, very troublesome. I don't know of a single political figure of any political party that runs for office on the slogan of elect me and I'll let my caucus decide my vote. Not one. They all talk about how independent they'll be, how they're going to represent you. And they almost infer you personally. And then they go to Washington, St. Paul, wherever it may be, and the powers to be virtually dictate the public policy stance will be. And all of a sudden, all dissent is washed away in order to be able to preserve the strength, if you will, of two political parties. Having served in the legislature, I can tell you that strain is enormous. Uh, you get into things like school aid formulas, where you're supposed to represent your district. And uh, you suddenly find that your district is on the short end of a formula stick and the money is going elsewhere. I mean, let's face it, we all fight about money. Well, what is that representative supposed to do? Walk the line? And for the good old party, drown? But in the process of him taking that risk, what happens to his district? Who, in fact, represented their interests? And the answer is, tough luck. And I think that's wrong. And I think when you look at what a role of a state legislator ought to be, is one, yes, they should have a focus on state issues. And by that, when you look back over history, when you talk about, for instance, health care, most legislators come to the table and say, let's talk about what's good for the state, the broad constituencies that form the state. On more narrow issues, like the allocation of highway funds, they almost entirely take a look on my district. And that's natural. That's the tug and pull. And then you get into, well, what is the role of the governor? I've always argued 
that the governor has the most powerful weapon that any political body can have in its possession, that's called a veto. I mean, think about it. 201 legislators can vote one way, one governor can vote one way, and guess who wins? The governor. Ah, uh, there we go again, everybody's favorite instrument. <laughs> but I do think it's important for governors on sensitive issues to try to develop proposals with bipartisan input. Try to, if, if you know your legislative body, try to get people on board early on relative to what you intend to do in those proposals that have an enormous impact on the state as a whole. From there, you can better develop, if you will, a bipartisan approach. 